Well, this was a surprise, except for those of us who try cases and know that sometimes on a retrial, your best deal comes from the prosecution. So I would like to bring my fabulous, wonderful guest in to discuss this with me. And oh my gosh, Bernarda Villalona, trial attorney extraordinaire. You and I have known each other for a while by far, and we finally got to meet a couple weeks ago. Then you were on the show, and I'm so excited to have you back. I'm glad to be back, Linda. And of course, my New Jersey person, okay, Bob Hilla. <laughs> Bob, Bob was the former president of the State Bar of New Jersey. Everyone calls him the professor because not only is he charming and knows the law, and that's why when he tests it, talks to a jury, he's just like, oh my God, you got to vote for my client, no matter how bad they are. They are because, you know, I'm Bob Hilla and I'm the professor, but I'm just kidding you. <laughs> Welcome, Bob. Welcome back. Linda, always great to be with you. So let me start with you, Bob. This was a little bit of a surprise because there were uh, nine counts that the jury really didn't make a decision on, you know, in terms of being totally against Kellen Winslow. He was convicted of three counts. The most important one was the forcible rape. The other two, one was a lewdness, one was an indecent exposure. Were you surprised that all of a sudden he pleaded guilty? I think I am uh, because, you know, the best shot the state had was in the first trial when they could have the spillover effect from all the different cases that were uh, being condensed into that trial. Here you had all the ones that were the difficult ones um, for the state. Uh, and, and, you know, the, there was a better shot, I think, for him to beat these charges because the jury in the first trial had trouble with them. Wow, yes, and, and Bernardo, um, on Jane Doe number one particularly, there were three counts that the jury had been hung on. That was kidnapping for a specific felony crime, forcible rape, and forcible oral copulation. He ended up ple pleading guilty on this to a, a sexual battery, uh, a felony sexual battery here. But that jury was hung 7-5. Usually prosecutors don't retry 7-5 cases. Why now do you think that, that uh, Winslow would take a deal on this count? On these counts? Well, the thing is, Linda, is that the only thing that is guaranteed when you're dealing with a criminal case is a plea. Having known that being a former Philadelphia prosecutor and having been a trial attorney for the last 15 years, you know that jurors, they can do whatever. You just never know. That's why people roll the dice in going to trial. But the only thing that is guaranteed here, if you take a plea, because you know what the outcome will be and you know what the sentence will be. So the reality is that Winslow didn't want to roll the dice the second time. And he'd rather take a 12 to possible 18 year sentence. But let's listen to something that happened yesterday that was a little bit of a hesitation and may have almost stopped Kellen Winslow himself. Well, let me say right now, I think the state proved their case. I was one of the few that uh, wasn't for the hung, it was surprisingly enough. But, Bob Hiller, I am really uncomfortable with taking the plea under this circumstance where he is hedging and hawing and hedging and hawing and the defense says he may have CTE. I would have sent the jury home and come back and uh, dealt this, uh, let, let as much time go, about, go on without saying, hey, there's a jury outside, we could pick the jury, you know, we can the opening statements, whatever. Well, this happens not infrequently and it's a defense counsel's nightmare when you get everything set up and then your client saying yes, 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 and then the next thing you know, uh, the client saying, well, I'm not sure. Um, but the CTE component, I think, yes, you're right. I think that, you know, maybe the court should have paused here, examined that, and then come back to make sure that that is not a weighing factor on this decision. Yeah, and Bernardo, that's exactly. Why not give him, let the court send him out for a psychological, unless there was one that was presented to the court that he's okay. Uh, obviously, he's looking back all the time. He was looking back at whoa, this way, it was actually this way. His father, who had some outbursts in the courtroom when, when certain evidence wasn't allowed. What say you about giving some time and bringing him back and letting him plead so there's no question? I would have rathered him to get some time to think about it, so probably I would have asked the judge to break and ask for the jurors to come back tomorrow morning so he can think about it. Because but but he, the judge gave him five minutes, five, one, two, three, we could count it here. No, but, the, but the thing is you need more time than that because when you're talking about a plea, first off, the standard is that they have to knowingly and voluntarily enter into a plea with no pressure. So knowingly, this person has to know exactly what he's entering into. So if he has some hesitation, remember, you can't get your plea back. Back. You can't come back tomorrow and say, oh, I don't want to plea anymore and I want to get my plea back. It is very difficult to get a plea back. The next thing that happens is sentencing. So I think that both sides should have asked for an adjournment until the next day because what is it going to hurt? Well, we have the you know what already. we're going to see because I have a feeling this ain't over yet. But we're going to take a quick break here and when we come back, we'll look at some of the testimony from Jane Doe number four.